Politicians do it all the time. They pick your wallet. <laughs> That's what they do. Um, it's a real honor to be here. Um, thank you for inviting me. Before I start, I want to have a show of hands, a small poll. How many of you voted at the last election? March, we had an election, provincial council. Don't be shy, be honest. Okay, we have about a half. Uh, generally, okay. Let me tell you a story. Last Saturday, had a tough day. I was asked to go down to Gaul to attend to some work for the party. Came back, had four functions back to back, broke a promise to my daughter, told that I was going to buy her a book, but couldn't. Evening, my wife and I accidentally bumped into a well-dressed professional woman. She introduced herself to me. She said her name was M, sorry, G, from a company called M. I promised I wouldn't divulge the name nor the place she worked. Realizing that she emphasized where she worked, I said, my name is Harsha Disego, MP. So she said, okay, and we had an answer. She um, talked about a $30 billion enterprise and how well the company was doing both in Sri Lanka and the region. I always like to talk to successful people, want to be successful, creative people. So I listened to her. Then uh, after she finished her little story, she asked me, so how is your jam and cordial business? I said, what? <laughs> uh, obviously, you know. Like, I was taken aback, but I realized immediately what had happened. None of my subtle comments about how her enterprise was powering social media and how that was creating discussion didn't even make a dent, you know, in thinking that I might have something to do with politics. I uh, told her, look, MP stands for Member of Parliament, not Marketing Department. You know, that was the name of the state-owned enterprise before it was privatized, and Lanka Canaries kept that name. And she was obviously <laughs> embarrassed. She profusely apologized, and we had another 20-minute discussion. My wife, of course, was not very happy, but I had to get my point across to her. So she said, Harsha, I'm not interested in politics. I don't follow politics. I don't care. It doesn't bother me. So I was wondering, you know, maybe she has no worries. She doesn't have to worry about anything. Like, I'm happy, happy, happy. Can't nothing bring me down. Most of you probably saw this. This is the YouTube viral video of a guy called Farrell Williams. It's a whole bunch of them you can go watch. It's how happy people are. But what is the reality? I downloaded the World Happiness Report for 2013. It was done by a bunch of guys who most of us respect, led by a chap called Jeffrey Sachs at uh, the Earth Institute. You know, we say Sri Lankans are really happy, happy, happy people. But we are ranked 137 out of 156 countries. That can't be really happy, but the guys happy, happy, happy. Right? So Sachs sort of dissects what makes a person happy. By and large, it's economic related. Good education leads to a good job good quality of life, healthcare, freedom of life choices, and to live in a society 
free of corruption. So all these in various different forms make people generally happy. Now, the issue is, all these things are linked to policy, politicians, elected officials. To be happy, we have to do what needs to be done so that people can be happy. Come back to this. How do we create employment? I mean, I was amazed at how Isuru is creating employment, how Lona is creating employment. Um, education, right? Who gets, who, how can we give all our kids a good education? Good jobs, healthcare, freedom to speak, freedom to practice our religion. We have to do it. So, the responsibility of the elected officer. Now, this is interesting because in preparation for this talk, I called Professor Siri Hetkige, Professor at the University of Colombo, who's been working on the National Youth Survey. The first one was done in 1999, the second one was done in 2009. <clears throat> the report is still coming up. <laughs> he was kind enough to give me an advanced copy. I appreciate that. The book is called Youth and Social Transformation, Improving Life Chances of Youth in Sri Lanka. Now, I <coughs> went through this thick document. And I picked up this passage. It's in chapter 7. Sri Lanka as a nation has been unable to win the trust of young people and has failed to enlist young people as partners of development. This is completely the opposite of what we set out to do. We set out to have, have young people trust in us. And we set out to partner young people. Kamal is here, works a lot with edX, trying to get young people involved in all kinds of projects. But this is scary. I'm going to take one example, try to get my point across. 3,000 youth answered the survey all across Sri Lanka. They asked them between the ages of 15 and 29, what do you want to do? If you're in college, if you're in school, what do you want to do after school? If you're already after school, what do you want to do? Look at these numbers. 50% said they want to go get a bachelor's degree. At least. On top of that, 7% in addition to that said they want to get a master's degree. And I was shocked. Further, 12% want to get PhDs. Did you really think that this would be the kind of answer you would get? 11% said they want some certificate programs. A further 12% said a diploma. Look at what they want to do. 92% want a professional or academic qualification after school. What is the reality? I looked at the University Grants Commission 13-14 uh, <clears throat> document. Public universities of the 230,000 who sit, about 24,000 are taken in, that's about 11%. Then there are the non-UGC public universities like NIBM, NSBM and so on. Then there are the foreign in-country programs, ACBT and um, uh, uh, London School of Economics and things like that. Then kids go overseas to Australia, America, UK and all. Then you do accounting, management, marketing, all of that. Learn Asia did an interesting study last year and they found out that number was about 23%. Look at the disparity. 92% of them want to get there, only 23% get there. Happy, happy, happy? <laughs> I don't think so, young men and women. 
Now, if you are not part of that whole free quote unquote education system, you have to pay. And also, you need to speak the Queen's language. Right? Yes, it has the British Council. <laughs> so, but only a minority speak English or can converse in English. Why is that? Because they don't have facilities in the rural schools. At best, it is poor. The facilities to teach English in rural Sri Lanka. I looked at the school census, the Ministry of Education of all schools, just under 10,000 working schools. There's Every day we hear in Parliament, Bangalore says, two schools close down here, four schools close down there. <laughs> but of all the schools, in 9,300 schools, the medium of instruction is either Sinhala or English, sorry, or Tamil. Of, in 300 schools, either, sorry, it is Sinhala and English. In 110 schools, it is Tamil and English, and only 29 schools in this country, according to the Ministry of Education, have uh, Sinhala, Tamil, and English as mediums of instruction that you can choose. So this is 3%, this is 1%, this is 0.3%, that is 4.3%. Happy, happy, happy. So, what do you do? What do people do? I don't care about politics. I don't follow you people. Who are you? Don't bother me. I saw a Facebook post yesterday. Politicians and their hangers on do not enter this house. majority do nothing. They complain to jack. They are frustrated. But they do nothing. Complain. A small majority fight. This kid came to see me in my office and complained about his three-year allied health science degree. He told me, help me sir. Talk, to, uh, talk about this in parliament. We want to study for four years. About a week later, somebody called and told me, Sir, that kid who came to see you? I said, yeah, yeah. He got beaten up. I said, really? Where is he? He's in hospital. So I to see the kid in hospital. This is a big chain. He's chained to his bed. And he's beaten up. Because he didn't shut up, he said, I want my four years. And as always, if you do that, you get beat up and thrown behind. Another one that all of us remember is a 6% story. Remember that one? For 99 days, university professors went on strike. A lot of civil society groups, the opposition got together and they asked for 6% for education. I looked at the numbers for 2013. It fell from 1.8 to 1.7. Happy? 92% want to get there, 23% actually get there. So, what are the alternatives for the youth? Now this gets really interesting now. I come back to the same uh, court. Sri Lanka as a nation has been unable to win the trust of young people and has failed to enlist young people as partners of development. So we believe that this is what we need to do for young people. I sit in parliament. I believe I have to vote for a particular amendment because I believe that's good. The young people believe that they want something else. What I believe, what they believe, are not overlapping. There are shared beliefs. 
But how the hell do I know what their beliefs are if they don't engage? If they tell me, I don't care about what you do, I don't care about who you are, I don't care about policy, politics, and just your existence. Because you, after all, are trying to pick my power. <laughs> the survey is very revealing. Only six people out of a hundred youth said they have a lot of trust in politicians, elected officials. Only six out of a hundred, 94, didn't say that. Actually, 41% said, get out of here, you know. We have absolutely no trust in those jokers who come to our houses in their national suit and uh, do the I go on a daily basis. So that yeah. now I said, you know, I'm a new uh, grassroots politician. The electorate I got, uh, I got just two years ago. So I haven't really been engaged that much. But I work with data. I got my office to look at every person who voted at the election this time. I said, look at the age. Look at how many people actually went to the polling booth in the age group of 18 to 25. And uh, my office looked at the numbers and they said, sir, 41% of the people have been to vote of that age group. You know how much they fought to get universal franchise? You know, in 1931, Ceylon was one of the first countries in the world to get universal franchise with the Donamo Constitution. You give them the right, and four out of ten people go to vote. They must be either on Facebook, or just jabbering, watching some telegram. I don't know what they do. They are happy, happy, happy. <laughs> <laughs> so, I want to turn this thing around. I want to say, young people don't care is not true. I say, young people do care. Young people care. It's their life. They have to care. But, they're disengaged because they can't have a meaningful engagement with your politician. How many of you know who your organizer is for electorate? I put it so that you would start at least start thinking about it when I was introduced. So you got almost 17 minutes to think about. You don't know. You can't have a meaningful engagement. So either you are disengaged. My time is up, or you confront. So, my last slide is the way forward is to build mutual trust. You have to build trust so that youth and people's representatives can collaborate for progress. It's a virtuous cycle. You build trust, and then you collaborate, you have seen progress. If you see progress, you build trust. If you build trust, you progress. So that is how uh, we have to move on. So we have to open up. Yes, I have to stop. And uh, we, you have to gather, you have to discuss, you have to engage. So do it for yourself. It's your life. It's your life.